Hey gang! So as I mentioned in the last video, I am going to touch up my backdrop a little bit. I'm going to remove all the snow from the backdrop. I didn't like how the modeling was turning out for the snow. It wasn't really looking super great. Um, and so uh, I'm going to move the uh, season up just a couple of weeks. And uh, instead of uh, just a little bit of snow on the ground, I'm going to have just kind of a sloppy, muddy mess on the ground instead. So uh, I need to cover up all the snow on the backdrop, and I thought uh, I got in a lot of good comments on my um, uh, backdrop painting in the past, so I figured I would take this moment to kind of show you how I paint my backdrop. First thing I needed to do was to mix up some paint, and I'm doing it here on this palette paper, and I'm using some raw sienna. I'm using some Turner's Yellow, and I am using a dash of Mars Violet Deep. And that's going to give me the basic color I want for the mud. And I'm going to, uh, and then from there, I take a little bit of Ivory Black and a little bit of Titanium White. And that sort of cuts the saturation back on it, darkens it up a little bit, uh, and helps it kind of match the rest of the muddy bits of my layout. If you take a look at the, kind of this brown slushiness, um, doesn't look too slushy right now. It's kind of supposed to look like dead grass and mud and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's the sort of color I'm going for. So, I'll try not to hit anything on my track here. Let's move this out of the way and put my camera up closer to the mountainside there and you can kind of see what I'm doing. And I'm just using an old brush. Um, and so it's not going to go on very, very smoothly. And the paint itself is pretty old as well. So it's going to be a little clumpy, a little gloppy. The first thing I'm going to do is just going to put on a base layer of the paint. I'm going to go ahead and cover all that white. And you see I just kind of like slapping it all in there. And then spreading it around a little bit once I get it on the backdrop. This doesn't need to look perfect. In fact, the kind of the messier it is, the better it is, because uh, it just looks a little more random and a little more natural. And I didn't do a perfect job mixing the paint on the palette paper. So you see some white kind of sneaking in there and the colors get just kind of a little lighter in areas. I'm going to go ahead and go over those again. So I could be a little bit more. i got a couple areas over here off camera. I'm just going to go ahead and grab real quick. I could be a little more, uh, do a little bit better job kind of mixing stuff up, mixing paint up on the palette paper itself. But if I don't mix it perfectly on the palette paper, no, no big deal. I can just go ahead and do it on the canvas. I'm going to go ahead and kind of long side strokes. Kind of start to mix that in with the previous work. Okay. That works pretty good for me. I'm going to let this first layer dry and I'm going to go over it again with a second layer. Actually, let me, let me go ahead and there's some thicker bits of paint that made it on here. That titanium white I used was a little older, so it was a little, a little chunky. And when I say a little older, I mean like 20 years older. <laughs> I'm using some pretty old paints from back when I was a teenager at this point, but it's still kind of doing the job. It does what it needs to do. All right. That's a good first coat. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and uh, come back to it. Okay, now that it's dried <clears throat> a little bit, I've um, gone ahead and mixed up some 
um, colors to make it look like my, my dry weeds. Uh, I used, what did I use? I used cadmium yellow and a little raw sienna and some white and black. It made it much more yellow this time. And then the other thing I did was I added some matte medium, Liquitex matte medium. See right here, it comes in a, in a bottle. And that's gonna thin it out a little bit. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier for me to apply <clears throat> um, and get nice detail uh, on my backdrop with. It just makes it just a little smoother uh, to flow off the brush. Um, and so, what I'm going to do here now is just start from the back and just start applying upward brush strokes and along the edge in little patches. And this doesn't need to be perfect. My philosophy for backdrop uh, painting is I kind of like them a little more impressionistic, a little more painterly myself. Um, that's just my my personal taste. Um, it tends to give it a little bit of a, a depth of field, I think, if it's a little more painterly. Um, and that just that just makes it sort of feel, in my opinion. Like it's pushed a little further back and a little further away. Um, I just like it. And because the advantage of doing it this way is I don't need to be super detailed in my painting. I'm just going to do, for the benefit of this video, just this section right here. So I get some in the back and I get some up front. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more matte medium, just straight matte medium. Let me see if I can show you here. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, I got this little puddle of matte medium here. I'm going to add just some matte medium to the brush. It's already got the yellow paint on it. You can see the yellow paint right there. And at this point, I am going to... Start dabbing it around the areas where the paint is. Grab a little more of that just straight matte medium and then dab a little more. And what's that's what's that's what that's doing is it's just uh, it's thinning out the yellow paint and allowing some of the background to be seen through. And so it's kind of looking, it's giving a little bit of a blotchy look. Okay. See that kind of blotchy look. That's adding some layers to the scene. It's not, you know, kind of mixing my colors on the canvas almost. Let me grab just a little more of the straight yellow. I'm going to go back here and now in the front I'm going to go ahead and put a happy little bush. So now I'm layering some more of the thick stuff on top of those blotchy bits that I just created. And I'm making little upward motions. And that's about it. Grab some more of the, just the mat, and come in here. And by spreading it on in this area, I'm just making it look like there's like a little hill or something right there. 
And it's basically just mixing everything and spreading everything on the canvas itself, as opposed to trying to do it on your palette and then applying that to the canvas later. Okay. And you can see, let me show you over here. I applied that same technique over here. I'm going to go back and once I've added the light areas here, I'm going to add a, little, a few little darker splotches around in there as well. You can see as you kind of get back away from it though, right about viewing distance, it's looking pretty darn good. All right, we'll come back for one last pass once I lay down the, the yellow here. Okay, final step here is to add in some more dark areas. I'm gonna make them a little more orangey. Just to give it a little bit of a different color. And same technique as before. Just lay on a little bit like this. And then grab your matte medium and spread it around a bit. It's going to just make it a little more shadowy. Oop, excuse me. And I'm trying to do this without the light getting in the way. Let's try it. try it from that angle. Oop, I'm about out of that medium. Can we get a little more? Squirt it on my palette. All right. And now I'm just going to go kind of side side to side. It's just going to soften a little bit of that hard, those hard lines. I'm over here off camera working here for a second. Just adds a little more depth and a little more just a little more texture. The reason why I use I go uh, light then dark is because I always find it easier to paint dark on light and get the results that I'm looking for. For some reason, if I'm going light on dark, you know. It can get a little good, but if it's too light, it's harder for me to make uh, to make it adjustments. So you can see right here, you know, I've got this light on this dark, and it just tends to start turning into a big sloppy bright mess. And then I gotta kind of go back here and I gotta soften that up again with the dark.
I'd rather have shadows and really bright highlights on a backdrop because at least shadows don't tend to call attention to themselves like a really bright highlighted area that says hey look at me I'm in the sun okay now my final step is to take some almost almost completely black we're gonna go pretty pretty black here and while everything's still on the canvas and drying we're gonna go ahead and stick that black in that area there then grab some matte medium and go over it and kind of rub it in just like that now that matte medium is going to look a little white but it'll it'll dry over here and do the same some black in these areas here and then grab your matte medium nice horizontal strokes horizontal is the key here okay and that'll start to make it look like that, that muddiness that I was talking to you guys about earlier that I was looking for out of this Okay. <clears throat> and that's going to be about it. Let me let this dry for a little bit and I'll show you the final results. Okay. Paint is almost dry, so I wanted to show you what it looked like. Pretty good, I'd say. I, I really like it. I think it looks a lot better than it did before. It's got a lot more uh, depth to it, um, a lot more detail. So remember, start light, upward strokes. Start in the back, work your way up to the front, change it up with a little bit of a different uh, color, in this case I used orange, and, uh, and then in the front, take some almost pure black, spread it on your canvas there, and then with some matte medium, horizontal strokes, it gives you that kind of muddy look. Yeah, I think it looks pretty darn good. So just to give you an idea what this looks like with some more finished scenery, there you go right there. Same technique on this back wall here. And I think it looks pretty darn good. You can see how it blends nicely from the back into the foreground scenery there. And I like it. In this particular one, I added the, the dark shadowy areas right here and right here where the tracks kind of hit the backdrop. Just because they were, they kind of had a sharp line where it hit the backdrop before so by adding these kind of shadowy areas in this area here it helped push that backdrop just off of the tracks a little bit and give it just a little bit more space before those tracks hit the backdrop. I mean if you look at it up close you can see they're right up against that backdrop but by adding some shadowy areas there and that's some mud in that area there looks pretty good nice depth the backdrop looks much further away from the uh, tracks than they really are. Cool. All right, well, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. Give me a like if you'd like as well. And uh, I hope you liked what you saw. And uh, uh, for more on my painting techniques, go to my blog, MFT Radio. Oh, I almost said MFT Radio. MFT Railroad.com. That's mftrailroad.com, um, and do a search for uh, backdrop painting, and you'll see a, a long post I did um, when I painted the uh, the original backdrop on my railroad. You can see how I did that. Okay, alrighty, man. Looks good. I'll see you guys later.